Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 28 of Blender Master Course Advanced Level of Animation Part 2. In this chapter we'll be understanding about non-linear animation and all the concepts related to it. And if you are new to this course then do check out the previous 28 chapters from the link of the playlist in the pinned comment. Now the first question is what exactly is the non-linear animation? So non-linear animation allows manipulation and repurposing actions without the need of handling the keyframes or else in simple words it is the process of moving, rearranging, manipulating and blending different animation clips to produce a new series of motions. And now here is the default blender scene and to understand about non-linear animation we first have to remove all these objects so press A to select all and X to delete. Now we'll add the Suzanne or the monkey model. So press shift plus A, go to mesh and select the monkey. To make it look realistic right click and apply shade smooth. Also go to the modify properties click on add modifier and in the generate you will find the subdivision surface. Let's increase the levels viewport to a higher number like 3 and now we have a realistic Suzanne model. Now while practicing non-linear animation we have to use a dope sheet and to open the dope sheet I'll first expand this timeline editor and we'll change this timeline editor to the dope sheet. To do this click on this icon and here you will find the dope sheet. So I'll select this then click here where it is written dope sheet and change the mode to the action editor. So this is the action editor and whenever you create an animation in Blender, the data related to that animation is called action. And all this data is saved in your Blender file whenever your file is saved. Now since we'll be understanding about non-linear animation, so here we also need to add a non-linear animation editor. And for this, take your cursor over here, right click and select the horizontal split. Let's divide the area and left click to finalize. Now I'll expand the area of the action editor by left clicking and dragging like this. Now to change this into the non-linear animation editor, click on this icon and here in the animation section, you will find the non-linear animation. So we'll select this and this is the non-linear animation editor. So basically, whatever animation animation that you will do in the 3D viewport will be saved as an action and will be displayed here. So to create a new action, click on this new button and a new action is created. So suppose you want to create a simple animation with the Suzanne model showing that initially at the frame number 1, this object will be at its default position but then at the frame number 50, we'll move it upwards in the Z axis and then it will come down again when it reaches the frame number 100. And to do this with a pointer at the frame number 1, we'll insert a keyframe by pressing I and here we have the keyframe inserted. Now since the position of this object at the frame number 1 and the frame number 100 will be the same so I'll take the pointer to the frame 100 and to insert a keyframe here I will press I. Now here you can see that the area between the two keyframes is highlighted with an orange color and this means that there is no change happening between these two frames. The position, rotation and the scale of the object and all the other properties will remain the same between these two frames. But we needed to make the animation where it goes upwards in the z-axis. For this, I'll take this pointer to the frame number 50, go to the 3D view editor and to move it upwards, press G and Z and let's move it upwards by 5 meters. So I will type 5 and press enter. To insert a keyframe, press I and now we have a keyframe inserted here. And now let's play the animation by taking the pointer to the frame number 1 and pressing the space bar. So this was the animation that we created and now it is stored as an action here. You can even change the name of this action by clicking here and because it first goes up and then comes down. So let's change its name from action to up down. Press enter to confirm and now our action is renamed. And suppose you want to create another animation. So first you need to remove this animation of up down from the timeline. And to remove it, click on this cross icon. The animation that we created is now removed from the timeline. But that particular animation is saved in the form of an action. And to check it, click on this icon. And here you have the up down action saved. Now suppose you want to create another animation and save it as an action in your file. So to do this, click on this new button and a new action is created. And suppose you want that in this particular action, our object or the monkey model should rotate. So we'll take this pointer to the frame number one and let's insert a keyframe at this point. So press I and here we have the keyframe inserted. Let's take it to the frame number 50 and we will be creating an animation where this cube rotates by 180 degrees in the Z axis and then returns back to its original rotation. For this press R and Z and type 180 press enter to confirm. Now this object is rotated by 180 degrees in the Z axis and to insert a keyframe at the frame number 50 press I and here we have the key 
keyframe inserted. Now we'll take this pointer to the frame number 100 and to change its rotation back to the original rotation, I'll select this point with a left mouse button click. Previously both of them were selected, so both of them were highlighted as yellow, but now only this one is highlighted and we'll create a duplicate of this and place it at the frame number 100. So press shift plus T and move it like this and take it to the frame number 100 and left click to finalize. Now to play the animation, I'll take the pointer to the frame number 1 and press the space bar. And this is how the animation shows our object getting rotated by 180 degrees in z-axis and returning back to its default state. Now we'll change the action name to something related to the animation that we created. Since we created a rotating animation, so we should rename it to rotate and since we rotated it in z-axis, so I will type z. Press enter to confirm and now if I click this icon, we have two actions saved here. One of them is this up down and the other one is this rotate z. So basically by using non-linear animation, you can apply multiple animations to your object at the same time very conveniently. And to do this, we need to add these actions in the non-linear animation editor here. And adding these actions in this editor is known as pushing down. So suppose I select the up down action from here and click on this push down button. Then here we have this up down action added in the non-linear animation editor. To add the second action, click on this icon again and select this rotate action. Click on this push down button and now here in the non-linear animation editor, we have two actions added. One is the rotate and the other one is the up down. But now if I go to the frame number one and play the animation, you will notice that our object is showing only the rotation animation but not this up down animation. And this is because this rotation action is placed in the upper layer of the non-linear animation editor. This editor works in a very similar way to the video editing softwares like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. Here we will be getting the output only of the action which is in the upper layer. And since the rotate action is placed above the up down action, so here in the animation, we can see only the rotation and not the up down animation. Now suppose we want to see the up down animation and not the rotation. So for this you can uncheck this box here by left clicking on it and now if I play the animation by pressing the space bar our object will show the up down animation and not the rotation and this is because even though the rotation is still present in the upper layer but we have disabled it from here as a result it will only consider this up down action and the object will play this animation and you can even try this with more than two actions in your scene so suppose I create a new action from here take this pointer to the frame number one and we'll be creating an action where this cube moves in in the X axis. So to insert a keyframe at the frame number 1, press I, then go to the frame number 40 and let's move it in the X direction by pressing G and X and moving it like this. Press I to insert the keyframe and this time instead of making the animation of 100 frames, we'll be keeping it to 80 frames. To make the object return back to its default position, I'll select this point at the frame number 1, create a duplicate of it by pressing Shift plus D and placing it at the frame number 80. Left click to finalize. Now let's play the animation and this is how it looks. Let's also change the name of this action from here and because it is moving in the x direction so let's name it move x. Press enter to confirm and now if I click here we have three actions saved and to bring this move x action in the non-linear animation editor click on this push down button and here at the top layer we have this move x action inserted and now if I go to the frame number one and play the animation only the action at the uppermost layer will work which is the move x action. Now here we can see that we have disabled the rotate z action so first I'll enable this and now suppose you want only a particular animation to be played here regardless of the order of these actions in the editor. For example, if I want the rotate z action to be played, simply click on this star icon and now if I go to the frame number 1 and play the animation, then our object will show only the rotation animation in the scene. And you can even move these actions in the non-linear animation editor. And to do this, if I click on this move x with the left mouse button and drag it like this, we can simply move it in the timeline editor. Also you can change the layer of this action in this editor. For example if I left click and bring it down then now this move x action is in the second layer where this rotation action was placed. So now if I go to the frame number one and play the animation you will notice that the object first rotates in the z axis and then it will begin to move in the x axis and returns back to its original position. And now suppose you want to see multiple actions played together to form an entirely different animation. To put it in simple words we will be basically blending two actions together for example this move x and the rotate z action and the result would be that this monkey would move in the x direction and will also rotate in the z axis but to do this first with this action selected left click and drag it upwards let's also place it here 
and we'll remove this star from here and now all the layers are activated and now to combine multiple actions together we have to work on this toolbar but first let's expand this window by left clicking here and dragging like this and here we have the toolbar if you are not able to see this then simply press n to toggle this toolbar so here in the strip option selected you have the information about the frame starting and the frame ending for the selected action type but since we need to combine two actions we have to go to blending option and if I select the combine then it basically creates an animation where the move x action will be combined with the action below its layer which is the rotate z action. So if I take the pointer to the frame number 1 and play the animation you will notice that the object moves in the x axis and it is also showing the rotation in the z axis. Also if I go to the blending option again then we have the add option and if I select this it will work in a similar way as the combine option. So if I take it to frame number 1 and play the animation you will again notice that our monkey object show both the actions the moving action in the x axis as well as the rotation in the z axis and now suppose you want all the three actions to be played together for this we have to go to the second layer and here in the blending we'll change this to the combine option and this will combine the rotation and the up down animation so now if i go to the frame number one and play the animation you will notice that our object is showing all the three actions it moves in the x axis rotated in the z axis and also showed an up down animation and so this is how the non-linear animation works. One more important thing is that the practical use of non-linear animation is mostly in character animation because while you're animating your character you would need to add different types of actions and there you will be using the non-linear animation. So after covering the chapters related to character modeling and rigging in this course we will also understand about the use of this non-linear animation in animating your characters. So this brings us to the end of this chapter. In this chapter we learnt about creating and saving different actions about working in the non-linear animation editor then we learnt about combining different types of actions together to create a completely new animation and our next chapter will be the chapter number 29 3d text in blender so don't forget to subscribe to our channel press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one